go. Great. Okay. So, Thomas, your turn. Um, you all know Christian Meyer, I guess. It's um, a well-known developer, small developer for 15 years now. And I met him a year ago at ESA. Um, we share some some ideas on, on how to do code properly and how to share code, uh, coding style. Um, and that's the reason why we why we work together actually, because we understood each other. Um, this talk is about, well, we, we also uh, suffer from the same problems when we look at, um, at our working uh, systems, at, at the systems in our work. Um, they, they seem no, let me, let me first explain the, the key uh, words from our title. Um, we like to specify things. Um, we like to make software simpler, so to understand it better, so to make it maintainable, um, to make it readable for exploration reasons. We like to explore things before we fix them, uh, or before we uh, even, uh, even before we model them in the final state, and we like to or somewhat what's the domain about, etc. And that is um, what we're talking about here. Making systems simple, making systems readable, and specify stuff to reuse it. So um, the problems I talked about um, that we notice in, in, in almost every of our systems is they're difficult. Um, instead of being readable, we don't understand them from scratch. We need to to debug lots of stuff to understand what's going on. Um, maintenance is difficult almost in every system we so And so there is something wrong we thought. Um, we had this feeling for all of our um, work life actually. And what we also share is um, a liking of functional style. That is um, working in a style um, without side effects. Or to, we like to prevent side effects wherever possible. Um, so this makes a difference in, 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 in almost um, any situation we try to fit. And then we got, um, we noticed a paper written by a certain Bruce Lennon as early as 1982. Um, he told us um, to separate values, which are objects that could change, from regular objects we could, which can change, of course, and use to separate them, to model each in its proper place, and then to use them both um, wherever, um, wherever the proper um, situation uh, is. <coughs> um, so what we learned from McLaren is what is the value. Um, he tells us the value is an abstract concept. So this is, um, for instance, a number which is valid in every concept, the context, which is um, existing anywhere. You need it. It's just a number. And um, it's also an object, of course, but it doesn't have, uh, the, the, the abstract concept doesn't have a life cycle, so you can't create a number like what it is just there. And um, it can change, it's, it's always what it do. Um, and it, it means the same in many contexts. So this is what a value is. But it's, it's not quite useful, it's just, um, yeah, it's the number. And the same thing uh, holds true for strings or other stuff we have in the standard. And this can much more than this. So, um, you, you all know that no values. You use them every day. There in the code. So, for example, these immediate no, integers, small integers, characters, they are actually perfect values. You cannot distinguish them. You cannot uh, make the point of, oh, this is this A character or this A character. It just doesn't make sense. It's all the same bit pattern in the machine. This is actually recognized by the compiler. It's hard coded. So, you write it in text and the compiler will give you that number of the character. Similar things are literals. Values, simple values, they print themselves and you just write them in code. The compiler will happily find what kind of object that will be and will give it to you. So floats are a good, good example. 
symbols, literal strings and literal arrays. Because there are also the mutable ones, which are no values. That are real objects. So you change them and everything. But these little ones are not changeable. And most of the small talks support this immutability. You will get an error when you try to change them. Other things we use in our daily life, which are value-like, but actually they are implemented as objects, like point, association, color value. Um, they are actually not supported by the compiler. They are just created by the virtue of small talk, just message sense. So this, this at <coughs> or this arrow here, they're just binary operators, just ordinary things you can define in the and will give you an object which you can throw around. Usually you wouldn't change them once you create them. You just use um, other things use constructors like color value, red, green, blue. Send the class a method, get an object back, and usually you wouldn't change that after creation. So you normally use it as a value, as an unchangeable thing. Okay, these are very familiar, right? So what we want to see is values like this. Structured, rich, complex values. Okay, now I have to remember all the things I want to say about this. So <clears throat> the point is, these things will never change. You just create them and they, yeah, you use them and then you throw them, throw them away. We create them by using constructors, just send them to the class. We'll give you an object and we make sure it's immutable and it has no setters. So no setters, no setters. Setters are really bad. So no setters, um, you won't be able to change the state in a legal norm. Um, but they are complex. I mean, you can express a lot of stuff, stuff which should change conceptually, you can model as a value. Um, this is actually code, this is living in the system. Um, you can print them. They actually print themselves with this. So I can make, make sure they are printed nicely, indented, and all this stuff. You can um, select them and inspect them. And you will get the value back. I mean, another value back. Values you want. You, you, you kind of distinguish, right? So this chart text with its style and its color, if you get one instance and you get another one, you shouldn't distinguish between the two. They're just values. Just ordinary things. Um, one more. Okay? <clears throat> nice thing is it, it's just message, message sense. Just smart. No, no magic. But small dog supports all these nice things. Uh, syntax color, um, completion, um, references, of course. You can find the class references, the uh, constructor sense, and everything. The implementers and all these things. So it's all very nicely supported by the standard small dog environment. <coughs> okay, this is how we actually specify such a value. <coughs> so, um, this chart text we abbreviated a little bit, <coughs> has a style, a string, and a position. We specify it on the class with a local specification, um, implying, of course, it can do the class hierarchies, and if you inherit actually these attributes, like style, and string. Um, these guys we declare constant. <coughs> that means they're mandatory. You, you need them. Such a text needs these two attributes at least. And we specify the classes of those, <coughs> which have to be value classes. So values only consist of values. Um, other, <coughs> other attributes can be optional. So for example, we use a position up there, which is a, just a point, and it has a default of 0, 0. But it also has a optional attribute like kerning, which is zero in most of the cases, and we don't use it for our text, so we just plot it. That means the expressive power is a little better. You don't have to write just every little detail, so most of the stuff which is default, you just plot. And you just have a very concise, nice, um, nice thing. Okay, okay. that's my part. Not uh, so do you create oh. all the structures? Um, from the specification? Exactly. Yes. <coughs> we create all kinds.
Actually, this is the only stuff we write down. And from this, there's a constructor, actually there are many constructors created because when you have optional parameters, you need constructors which drop these things. Right? Then we have an initializer, we have um, accessors, uh, we need a printer, so a printer which is print nicely prints this thing. <coughs> and actually we then make this an example of the task. So it's an example, and it's generated once you generate all the stuff, you have, have an object or have a value at hand for, for the test. Oh yeah, please ask questions, it's good. Yeah, more than that. Men with a feedback. Well, if the value is then that you should have a quality. Yes, this is defined in the superclass value. This is just generically defined as being the same class and the same attributes. So, very simple. So, they're not actually the same object, but you. They're the same, they're not identical. But uh, we wouldn't put this in between uh, values which have the same attributes and are of the same class. You shouldn't do that. Let me go something deeper in the nature of, of our values, so to say. Um, so we just put values in values. We just um, make a composite of them. And keep that composite in your group. And simple as that, it's just a top-down tree, uh, values made of values. And as Christian said already, it's a real object. It's a normal small top object with any behavior you have in any object, you can model your domain. And when you are in the opinion that uh, your domain object should change, then it's a good thing you can make value from that because then you can't change. Um, you make class hierarchies out of this, etc., etc. And yeah, well, the value is just like any, uh, nearly any object, it's behavior and it's content. And um, as to the, we, we mentioned that already, and I repeat this here, um, it's, it's a real object, so you can't make, you, you can, but you won't make sure that it's a single or whatever, or that it get cached or whatever. Um, you can create two of them. But um, if you compare them, they are the same. They have no identity. Yeah. Um, we like the generation stuff not because it's necessary for our model, but because it makes life easy. As I um, explained before, I mean, we want to explore the models. Uh, we want to change the models to see what happens, what misses, and we want to add and um, delete the methods um, and instances of it. And um, therefore, we have the generation process, uh, which makes life easier. But it's uh, simple as that. It's just a specification you can use for generating and for regenerating, but you can do it by hand if you want. It's just a normal object like anyone else. Mm -hmm. What happens to existing levels if you find the attribute which is not optional? Yeah, that's a bit, a bit of a problem of our implementation. We are working on that. But normally we need to delete them and regenerate them. Um. You mean existing instances? Yeah, yeah. Existing it's it's just small talk, it just gets mutated and has probably yeah. a nil for the new attribute. If you don't define a default for a non optional uh, Actually, when, when we change the specification, for example, from just add another default, default attribute, then uh, there's no big change to any of the existing uh, things you have in code, right? Um, you, you don't care about the things which are in the system. Just care about the things which are the code because you always re, re instantiate these things. You, you normally don't, don't hold on to them and just values. It's just like the change, right? They just uh, go through the system. So, there's a question which I have a colleague who would love to hear as well. How, how do you compute some sort of reasonable hash when you're complex out? <laughs> Andres, could you answer that? <laughs> Well, we just use 
take the default way, right? We just take the hashes of the attributes and bit uh, XOR and put that in. That's all. So I don't know, that's probably not a good one. Example. You see, this is this is why you don't want to start talking because now you know it's your presentation. Uh, you might want to consider how many you want to hash together depending on what are the things that are usually different for equal. Like for instance, hashing default values that are equal to zero probably is boring. It's it's the main question. I don't know uh, if if you really have a problem with holding on to values and dictionaries or something that you maybe look at. Otherwise, we can just see it. Because it seems like you're generating all the code for that different specification. It's not a lot of code. Well, depends on how many options you have. Yes. Um, uh, but what does hashing mean? Well, maybe it's a suspect Actually, we're not generating so much. You need to, uh, you need to uh, make the class by hand. You put in a method named local specification. It's a subclass responsibility, actually. And you hit the button in the browser. Yeah. That's it. And there's also, it's, uh, when you change the definition, it will try to be halfway smart to uh, generate the, the difference and stuff and to make, it, make it a nice view of the value. But perhaps we, we can. This is not the most important point, the generation Sorry. point. It's just for making it more practical, yes? Yeah. It's, um, it's the idea which is important. You can even uh, make your own implementation if you want. So let's uh, look first a little bit more into where we find values, actually, and the reality and where we model them. Right. So I, I hope that you have an idea what values are. So values are always created by sending a constructor to, to a class. That means other after which it's not changing anymore. Um, um, the correlation to that is that they can never build cycles, right? You can have megabyte values, but they are always with trees. There's no way to have cycles. There's also no way to have references or anything like that. Just simple, simple stuff. Why is that? You can, you can build uh, cycles. No, no, not when you have to put in all arguments at once when you create a oh.
just write a couple of tests with a, some special traits and see if they, are, they get really creative when I, when I have a provider of some kind. If I want to test the other way, <coughs> what, what happens in, the, in my system when I get such a value? I just have to write test, write this value into this test and let it go through my system. And everything's fine. I don't need any of this outside world. <coughs> and the other way, of course, works as well. But I could have a request value, which I hope you can see that very, um, yeah, very easily can map this to some outside structure. There's nothing more involved from the inside. Once I have this value, I can just all by itself, more or less, translate itself to the other side. Okay, so now <coughs> I envision a system like this. So <coughs> we have the outside world with C and files and database and graphics and internet and whatever. But if I model my outside, my boundary of the system just with values, I don't have to deal with all these things. I just create my values and have nice testability. And inside there live all my nice handcrafted drapes, objects which do magical things. But the problem is that my interfaces are just values. Simple, reproducible, yeah, things which live in methods, methods we get most of it. Of course you can go a step further and say, well, why not have modules, subsystems in our system having uh, enclosed by such a value interface? You can test them very easily. They are they independent now, much more independent than before. There's no way that an object, a real object, a changing thing, can cross this boundary. Of course, you need some objects to, to make the connection between these modules. <coughs> modules. But inside, uh, between the module, modules, there's... No, okay, you get the point, right? <laughs> Yeah, Thomas again, another nice application. They, they say that if you be nervous, this is a good sign. So this is a great one, I guess. Because I'm nervous too. And well, well, we find, I, I, I said um, before, we find values in our systems. We don't make them up, they are just there. And this is a, quite a good example. It's, the, it's a normal Windows deck. It's, um, well, and this is a value in our opinion. You shouldn't change this after you create it. Yeah? You can change the source code, of course, but after you create that, you shouldn't change it. And so we can write this as value. And look how it looks. Um, we find this nice. We find this uh, better supported by our own environment and then like it is right now. Um, and we didn't change anything. It's just the same content. Um, the other example is XML strings. I, I don't really understand why we keep XML strings in a, in a small talk system. But um, it's a value, in fact. And so we model them as values with our proper model. So, let me sum up. Um, why, why we like values is um, because we are now able to model values um, when they are adequate model. Um, they, they won't change and that's quite right for them. Um, we can choose when we have to model uh, when we have to model an object which can change or when we have to model a value which can't. And this makes our systems um, reliable, of course, because we have the the advantages of functional style. And um, we haven't got side effects in our processing of values, etc., etc. Um, and we have the feeling they become more simple. Um, because once you have modeled the values, you have made up uh, your mind what the model should be, um, you won't turn back. But you won't return and, and look at them again because we are just working like that. Like, like protocol, sort of. Yeah? And that in places this makes and uh, brings us simplicity. Um, yes, well, perhaps I can, can yeah. get up and say what we got the last two, two points. Uh, one, one point for the simple, simpleness. 
So I showed you this uh, chart text before. This is all there is. It's just a bunch of primitive values and some structure around. There's nothing more behind it. No magic. You don't you understand it at a glance, right? Right away, like like it is. There's nothing nothing there. So my feeling is, or well, I use them for years now in my systems, that large parts of the systems can be modeled as values, and you can just forget about them. They're, not, they're, they're trivial. They're simple. They're, you, you just get them out of your mind, out of the way, and you care about the real, real stuff, the objects, like all the collections, streams, complicated stuff. But values are simple. You can forget them. Model them once, forget them. They, they just work. There's nothing behind them. They're pretty. I, I like them. I like to look at the complex structure of the lamps. The, the, the usual print string of a, of a value is just that it prints itself as source. We call the method as source. So you open it, uh, an inspector on a value and you see all the structure, all down to the, to the gory details, everything at once. There's no hunting for references or whatever. You just see the whole thing. Um, and it's practical. It's unbelievably practical because especially small dots of pops are so nice. All the code tools work. It's just code. It's just nothing special. It's just code. You write it in your tests. You write it in your class methods for some special dear values you, you like or special test values you, you always use or whatever. So remember all our value classes have this value example for everyone. So you just write a test class example and see what's going on, or inspect it, see it is. Um, it prints itself, so this, that it prints itself in a form, in a literal form, so that it can be evaluated again, makes it so easy to record them, right? You just get them, dump them, dump them, dump them, and <laughs> reading it in and reinstantiating is just by evaluating the screen which, which you just dumped. Simple, practical, very nice. Okay, so our experience is we, we won't miss them. It makes, makes life so much easier. And we don't concentrate on this, but on the hard stuff. Okay. okay. So, what is it? Yes. Um, thank you very much for listening. And Steph uh, called, called me, um, we should join afterwards in the big room to uh, synchronize. Okay, but questions? We have to the point is, um, I just published this value stuff. It's just three little packages in the single public store. We have this article here. This is much more in depth than what we just talked about. <coughs> and of course, you can contact us. Um, I have a problem with this. Oops. And I, I, I agree. The creation methods are very clean and look very nice. And the pretty printing of them out the same way is very good. But if you would be so kind as to go back to the Windows spec example for me. In your slides, um, it exemplifies a problem with this approach. Okay. Text and the spec is not a value. Why not? Because we edit it. No. Uh, once you edit, once you once you uh, do this from the little array bullshit and you get this this array, um, who's changing it? I mean, well, the, the UI is. Uh, another example is the actual thing. No, it's not. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's just it's using it. It's never it's changing it. create a new one, but that means every single part of the, of the UI builder is always replacing something and putting it into something, which is... Yeah, but not that, this, but not so that means you have to recreate the whole thing from the top every time you modify something down in the middle. Yeah, usually you copy things, because you don't modify the, the one itself. You just copy them as if you need some modifications. So, so for me, the immutable thing that you have here is that statement, not the objects that we create. That's that's my problem here, is that um, if I instantiate that specification uh, and other specifications like it, like the settings one you have there, those are real things that my user interface wants to change. Yeah, that's what the user interface is actually an editor for values. But once you edit it, once you say accept, you have a value. There's no way of there. There shouldn't be a nice, understandable, easy system that some other parts should modify oh, yeah, just what you If I modify the layout frame, for example, mm -hmm. now, using these values that are immutable, I need to create a new layout frame. I didn't have a problem with that, 
but I can't put it in my text editor spec yet because I'm not a new text editor spec. And I can't put it in the array because I was needing to make a new array. And I can't put that in the spec collection because I was needing to make a new spec collection. Yeah. That's, you, you have to uh, create um, all objects in the, in, in the tree and all the time. From scratch. Uh, from scratch, but um, all others um, you can yeah. reuse because. Sure, but, but, so but that's needlessly complicated. Maybe one aspect of your question is that uh, we compare the textual representation here to the textual representation there. The same arguments you have to this, but this is a cool okay. but it but to this, the exactly. Left. The same, it's the same. It's no different. Here are specifications creating objects. No, they're, they're creating values. Yeah. This is value too, it's just an array, it's a literal array. I mean, it's yeah. what, what more value can you get? <laughs> change this, you just could use it to specify something you create. Real objects, for example, where the user changes all kinds of things. Okay, but now, now mm -hmm. this code is the value. And well, as soon as this model compiler it varies, it just gets you some, some object, right? I'm and seeing if you can see the value as it sits in the source code and the objects that live in memory. Uh, I I mis have misunderstood perhaps that the tree objects you can create you're treating as values. So in, in this particular case, I would not want to treat those objects that get created from that method as values. This this is a value. This is a literal error. This is a value. I mean, <laughs> it's a literal value. Right? It's literal. I mean, it's a value. So you can change it. You wouldn't change it. The compiler actually would say, book, book, book. nope, don't change it. It's a literal thing. Well, you don't change it. Um, the, the, the difference is just the readability of this and this. I the semantics is identical. I don't disagree with how if you, if you like this without syntax highlighting, without formatting, format, it's the same meaning. So it's a different presentation. It's the same thing. So you wouldn't make those objects on the right hand side be subclasses of complex values? Yes. So when when that text and spec layout name model is read only head requires control method is called, the instance that I get back will be immutable. It would be just just like the literal area here. So that's immutable right. as well. Because if that if that's the case, then it's now I need a whole different set of machinery to modify. Yeah, but that's correct. Yeah. Right. So you uh, use um, so that's right. Now this thing doesn't change, but the thing that changes that thing changes. Yes, but it can make a difference to this one. Hmm. I mean, the side effect of the business that you just had. Okay, but maybe we can take that off or no, something. Um, there was another question. Well, I thought I could clarify that question. Some of the examples we're giving were referring to um, the non literal Configurations usually are used to just specify something. 
you need to specify something, and then there's a machinery who uses a specification to create objects and all of that great effects. But the specification itself should be quite rigid and immutable. Neil, I'm thinking more about the next question related to this. Is there a possibility that objects that are values in one epoch would not be values at an earlier epoch? We're talking about editing a Windows spec. Then you save it to a file, this little array, and then you use it. And then in a different epoch, you decide to edit it because you're going to change the Windows spec. But of course, that doesn't affect your previous epoch, it doesn't affect others. Are values values in every epoch? Or do you imagine that the, you might have a system for producing a value and what's produced is indeed immutable? Um, maybe the confusion comes uh, from the specification business. I mean, this is a specification. It's just a way of saying, I want this, that, and this, and this, but I'm not using it, I'm, I'm not working with that. So there's some, some other system working with that, and it has no, probably not values. Well, maybe it has, maybe not, but this is not the point. The point is just you specify something, and you want to have it non-changeable. You want to have it reliably that way, and you don't want to have it after a while, oh, maybe it's another way. Or maybe you can change it, or somebody else changed it. But these guys are valuable. They're really fixed like that. But you can, of course, change it. You can have another one, but then that's another value. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. 